Welcome back, friends, to Reverb Music Festival 2024, day two. Today, I have the one, the only Dan <laughs> from Story of the Year. The only Dan. The only Dan that's ever in existed. existence. Dude, um, thank you for taking the time to come out. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I was glad. I saw you here hanging all day, and I was like, hey, I got to come over and talk. Well, obviously. Come so over tell, and hang me, out. tell me the story about the shrimp shirt. <laughs> I have to know. <laughs> this is a company called Meth Syndicate. Sick. Um, and they just make a bunch of goofy shirts. I have a few. I have one that has like Taylor Swift with like upside down crosses on her eyes or whatever. It's like just goofy stuff, you know? Sure. Um, and uh, the, this one's obviously funny. Why wouldn't there be three shrimps that say 666? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. They have one that says 69 with, with shrimp as well. Oh, perfect. You should, you uh, should have been wearing that one. Um, okay, so you're here for Reaver Music Festival. Are you guys on a tour right now, or what's, what's going on with we music at We just landed home from Australia. We were out there for two weeks. Dude, Australia's beautiful. Um, it's amazing, and had a great tour, but we landed Monday, went home for like two and a half days, and then flew here. So right now I'm like, I don't know what time. I feel like it's like five in the morning. I have no idea. So I'm powering through with a little booze, and uh, yeah. It's been a long couple weeks, but, uh, and then right before that, we were out with the used for like three weeks and, oh, um, cool. yeah, I've been busy. It's been crazy. Yeah, dude, Australia. I went there in uh, November and I rented a car by myself and just camped up and down the coast for like a week and a half. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. We don't get a lot of time to just hang out. You no, know, so. when, I, when I went, I actually was on the same flight home with uh, all time low. Oh, nice. And so I was chopping or like talking to them at the airport and saying like, dude, I got to be on vacation. When you guys are traveling, you don't really get to see the country. I mean a little bit. And we've been there probably. 10 or 15 times over the last 20 something years. But, uh, so sometimes we'll plan a couple of days off and go see stuff, you know, but this time it was kind of just straight work and, uh, but it's all good. But yeah, the flight, the flights are hard. Yeah. Other than that, I love it. It's my, one of my favorite places for sure. All right. So you guys are going to go on stage here in a little while. What's yep. your favorite song to perform and why? Uh, it changes all the time. Um, the obvious big ones you know until the day i die is just always going to work and it's always like the crowd just loves it so that's always great but right now we have a new uh newish record that we put out last year called tear me to pieces and uh the few that we've been playing off of that are really just awesome because they've been connecting really well um this song called war off of our new record it's actually the top streaming song for us right now which is crazy after 20 years to have that happen again to where people are liking new stuff you know usually you know it's just like you put a couple of successful records out and it's really hard to like top it or even match that at all. So there's a huge resurgence though. Yeah. Of this it's genre. like everything so. is just kind of working again and it's really cool. And yeah, it's been fun to play new songs. So, um, but I would say the title track off the new record, tear me to pieces. It's just, it's, it, it kind of encompasses everything we do. It's heavy. It's fast. It's catchy. It's like, it's just a classic story of the year song. And that's been really fun to play lately. What do you think is your most underappreciated song? One that you really, really loved, but it just didn't perform as well as you would have liked. Yeah, there's a lot of those. And that that is hard. You'd be like, man, I love this song. And then you play it and it's just like, huh. Everybody just kind of stands there and looks at you. Um, I don't know. There's a bunch of them, but we have a song called We're Not Gonna Make It off of our third record, The Black Swan. And uh, it's collectively as a band, it's like one of our favorite songs, but we never really have played it a lot live, but we've been talking about bringing it back. And I think like in the, not today, but uh, in the near future, we're going to start, we're going to start getting back into some deep cuts because we've been doing the 20th anniversary of Page Avenue for the last year and a half. And so we've been playing that entire record and uh, kind of sick of playing one record all the time. So we're going to start switching it up again now, and it's, it's going to be fun to bring back some deep cuts. Yeah. Have you guys ever thought about doing, I know a lot of bands have been doing these like acoustic cuts of old records like that to kind of re-release things in a different we, way? We did that on, on our 10-year anniversary of okay. Page Avenue. There is, uh, like on Spotify and everything, there's a, a reimagining of Page Avenue, which is, it's not necessarily acoustic there's a lot of like piano driven stuff it's, it's just reimagined they're it, whatever sure. songs they're all different versions and uh, it's mainly like a kind of acoustic record but but yeah it, it was fun to go back through and do that yeah and uh but that's been 10 years now which is crazy sure. so, so it's time for something new it and is time to do something else probably i feel like right now a lot of bands there's a lot of like genre bending they're like jumping into different kind of spaces yeah. if yeah, you yeah. guys had to put out even if it was just like a little six song ep together as a band what other genre would you push yourself into just to experiment with uh, i don't know I, I the obvious thing is everybody's doing country now but yeah. i'm not a country dude and uh i appreciate it for what it is but no i that is not going to happen for story of the year uh, as far as i'm concerned but um i don't know uh 
I would say we're, we collectively all love hip hop and stuff as, as much as rock. If, if there's ever music, there will be in our dressing room. It'll be some kind of 90s hip hop. It'll be like Outkast or Eminem or something. Um, we love like a tribe called Quest and all that, you know, n- early 90s kind of skateboard hip hop, you know? Sure. Uh, or mid 90s. But um, so I don't know if we could ever collab on something like that, but. I think that would be the only thing we would get excited about. Sure. I actually owned a skateboard shop for 10 years. So that was like my whole life up until this point has been that. And that's what inspired the show was I pursued my passion to open a skateboard shop. Awesome. Which then transitioned into doing the show. So I think over time uh, we continue to learn and we continue to grow. What is something, what is the most recent thing that you've learned that was valuable to you, whether it was career wise or life wise? Oh man, I don't know. That's... I'm really dumb, so I haven't learned anything. No. <laughs> um, well, I have two kids, uh, so you know you learn Same. a lot uh, parenting, and uh, that changes your life completely. And then having to tour and be a band and have the band like becoming more successful again and getting busy again. We've been like full time again, but having to learn how to balance the family life and and uh, touring and band guy life, um, which is awesome to have both, but you know it, it is a lot harder to leave your house for months at a time uh, and leave your kids. So um, that's the only thing I've really had to focus and learn is how to balance those things, and uh, it's still a process that I'm figuring out. But but we uh, we've been doing really well. Like we'll only do like usually like three weeks or so at a time. We try not to go definitely no more than a month, and uh, then take a few weeks off, and that usually works balancing it out. But that's crazy. I got a 12 and an eight year old. So yeah, mine are 11 and eight. Yeah. Yeah. And I honestly think age. like the, the best way to parent is to lead by example. I don't think the kids really listen to your words that much, but they do watch what you do. Yeah. And being able, like doing something that you care about and showing them that they can do anything that they want with their lives. Absolutely. If they work hard enough, it's worth making the sacrifice sometimes of not being able to be there like presently in front of them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I remind myself of that every time. It's like, I know that I'm doing what I love and I know they can, they can see that. And that's important. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm a happier person when I get to do music. And uh, so that helps me be a better parent. And uh, yeah, but it's hard. Yeah, it's absolutely hard. So if you were in my shoes and you're going to be a podcaster and you could have any guest in the world to sit down for an hour and ask them anything you want, who are you going to interview? Oh, man. Hard hitting questions on the Dave Grohl, pod. maybe? Oh, why? I mean, uh, he's a genius. But yeah, because it's Dave Grohl, obviously. Um, I don't know. If I was thinking musicians, it would either be Dave Grohl or maybe like Billy Joe from Green Day. Uh, it's the only two like big rock bands that I'm like, that we haven't toured with or played with, you know, that I'm like, they're still rock gods to me. You'd still um, fan out. Yeah. Like I would actually be excited to hang out with either of them. I've met Dave before, but just briefly like, hi Dave, uh, sure. I'm in a band called Story of the Year. He's like, oh, cool, man. Yeah. Right on. Uh, surprisingly, I've never met anybody in Green Day, but um, I don't know, but I, I would be a terrible podcaster because I'm not good at asking questions. I can <laughs> I can half half ass answer a question, but sure. Um, I would just be like, "Yeah, dude, uh, your band's cool. Uh, how do you do it? Yeah. Well, does I your, mean, does uh, your voice hurt? <laughs> you drink before you play? It would just be all like technical questions about what I do, you know? Sure. I mean, there's a, how there, do you warm up? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Which is all fun stuff. But so you guys have been a band for it's, how many years now? A long time, right? Um. Yeah. Our first record came out almost 20 years, 21 years ago. Sorry. And uh, we were. Uh, I've been playing with these four guys uh, since the mid 90s. So sure. Um, but different versions and different band names and different things. But as story of the year is around 2000, so 24 years ish. Okay, so over 24 years, you have all kinds of experiences happen to you that you get really excited about. But a lot of things, if you've had that experience over and over again, it loses its luster. What's yeah. the last thing that happened in your career that you were genuinely really excited about? Wow. Um, yeah, that is weird because you get so used to things mm-hmm. just happening. And then like crazy stuff will happen. And you're like, oh, that's just normal now. Um, I don't know. That is crazy. We do so many awesome tours, like so many great shows. Like today is so cool for us. I mean, that's not like my answer, but like just being able to play things like this where uh, we've toured with Hawthorne Heights, Anne Berlin, Yellow Card a million times, you know, Emery. We've known all these guys for 20 years and... Uh, it's, we don't get to see each other very often, but when you do, then you like fully appreciate, like, oh man, this, we're still doing this, and like this is really cool, and you get to see so many friends. Uh, that's usually the most excited I get, like on a show like this. It's like, 
awesome. I haven't seen anybody. Like when we were young, that big festival in Vegas, yeah. it's like the ultimate. We did the first year and it was just insane backstage. It's like this, but like with 50 bands, you know, that, right. and I know 48 of them, you know, it's like just crazy. So I just love seeing friends and getting to still do what we do and uh, hopefully make a little money in the process. Um, other than that, everything's kind of just normal now. It's like, sure. yeah, playing rock and roll, doing yeah. it again. But seeing your other friends, it's hard to have that longevity. Still enjoying what they what they're doing and being able to connect, I'm sure is yeah. definitely like super special. Let's leave this. Absolutely. Let's leave this because I know you got to go. Uh, so I got to go watch Hawthorne Heights. Exactly. Duh. 